Webheads, comic book fans, welcome to another episode of After the Poll. Fans, this is the video series where I take some of my most highly anticipated comics and see if they live up to the hype. Guys, I'm Mike Spider Slayer. Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. Is this my final Definitive 5? Well, you'll have to find out on Tuesday night where I do my live stream called Comic Book Weekly, where I team up with my good friends, Cat Comic Uno, Brant Fowler, as we talk about our top five comic books comic book news and a whole bunch more so be there tuesday night 10 15 p.m eastern for comic book weekly coming in at number eight this goes to captain america symbol of truth this is issue one this is one of two captain america books this one is featuring sam wilson and i was like man i was blown away by that captain america zero issue i had to go out and at least give this first issue a try now the artwork in this book was actually pretty good it was like explosive action in your face i really enjoyed it i love the other falcon i thought he was pretty badass um, again all the visuals the colors really popped so this was a really nice book to look at and uh, we get to see a lot of action in the beginning and then you wind up getting to see the mission at hand. Misty Knight gives Sam Wilson this mission to go after this train that has super soldier serum in it. And it kind of reminded me of the Disney Plus show, right? It, it very much reminded me of that. And I was like, oh, wow, this is almost too similar. So you wind up getting to see Sam Wilson and his Falcon sidekick go and after this train and try to find the super soldier serum. And then at the end of the book you wind up seeing uh i think crossbones being released from jail or being broken out of jail and i was like okay that's kind of cool there were some cool moments there with sam wilson and misty knight um but this book didn't really blow me out of the water will i give this one a second try I don't know. I think it's going to determine on the comic book week. I just thought that the cliffhanger was a little bit lackluster and I was like, eh, it's okay, right? So I don't know. A lot of similarities to Disney Plus, but I felt like I already read this story and I don't know if it warrants another try. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Coming in at number seven is Moon Knight Black, White, and Blood. So it's another one of these Black, White, and Blood stories. It's an anthology book. It has three separate stories in it. And Moon Knight has been all the talk as of late. So I was like, oh, I'm kind of still on this Moon Knight train. My shop threw in a couple of the variant covers for me as well. And we get introduced to uh, another Moon Knight, a Moon Knight that takes place in the future. In fact, it's the last priestess of Khonshu because the earth has been decimated. And so this version of the Moon Knight is basically all that's left. Again, the first story has to do with this new Moon Knight done by Jonathan Hickman and Bacillo. Uh, the artwork is kind of tough to make out in that very first story. So definitely very difficult. Uh, but I thought it was an interesting story here by Hickman. And then the next story, you get to see a team up with our Moon Knight now and Spider-Man, which I thought was the best story uh, when it comes to character interaction. And I thought that the artwork was really good in this. So I thought that story was nice. And then by the time you wind up getting to the third story, it was a story that you could actually read though in order that it's given to you or you can read from the back page all the way to the front of the story. And that was a quite interesting story as well. So all three stories were good in their own way. Um, I think people would buy this book because obviously they know this is kind of a spec book with this new potential potential moon knight that takes place in the future will we see that character again who knows but buy this one for the story not really for the spec i thought this one was okay so if you have the extra money and you still haven't bought it yet check it out Coming in at number six goes to a book that I think a lot of us have been highly anticipating, guys. That was Hulk versus Thor, Banner of War, part one. I mean, what can you expect when these two come together where well, you can expect lots of action, lots of fighting, lots of epic artwork, and that's what you get in this book. And I thought it was a lot of fun to look at. Um, here we get to see some of the action that's happening in this book. There was a two-page spread in here that was inspired obviously by like street fighter that was really badass to see the the artwork again was awesome it, it really did shine in this book and just all the fighting and battle scenes was just up close and in your face very colorful as well 
What can you expect out of this story? Well, in this story, you basically get to see what has happened with Thor and Hulk in their respective books. And I think Donny Cates did a great job in case you haven't read any of those books, but you wanted to check out this event. So I think he did a really nice job with that. And also we get a reminder that Hulk obviously did something very bad in El Paso, Texas. Uh, he actually killed 17 people, but Hulk does not remember this. So when these two are actually fighting each other, Hulk is just like, what are you talking about? I don't remember any of this. And so they wind up fighting the whole time and they just never come to a point where they just sit down and talk. So very epic book. I can't wait to see how this thing uh, continues to move on. But if you were on the fence about buying this, I say pick it up. You know, I thought it was a lot of fun. Now you're entering the top five. That's right, guys. Number five goes to issue 13 of crossover now i thought this was the conclusion to the series but you guys let me know in the comments that no this is not the conclusion to the series it's actually continuing it's just going on a break and after reading this issue you're like oh it is continuing and this book is just very meta i mean it's probably the most meta book i've ever read when it comes to a comic book where we have the writer the creator of this book is inserted in this book and he has a significant role in this book in fact a lot of the creators were written in this book um i don't want to give away too much because this is a book you really have to read to kind of get the gist of what's going on but we get to see the outcome of what happens in this world with the comic book characters what happens with donny cates there's some epic things that happen in this book as well when it comes to Negan if you've been keeping up with the series yes Negan from The Walking Dead is one of the big bads in this book uh, we get to see like Iron Man armor in this book as well but we wind up finding out the conclusion of this book when Donny Cates is on his way out that uh, there's a, a reason why these comic book characters are not going to go away and it happens in the last page so definitely read this book this series is definitely a recommend if you haven't read it at all in the past check out a trade you won't be disappointed great conclusion to this first story all right all these comic books this week that i'm currently reading have been pretty good but now these books just take the fun factor to a whole other level and that's what i loved about this week's books and coming in at number four this one goes to gi joe real american hero saturday morning adventures this book continues to impress because it's just fun it's just you open it up and you feel like that little kid again when you were watching tv saturday mornings now some of you guys that are much younger than i am probably don't even know what saturday morning cartoons were you know it was basically a time where all there was on tv in the morning on saturday mornings on specific channels like cbs abc nbc where it was a saturday morning cartoons and you just find your very best ones that's where gi joe came from transformers came from and a whole bunch of other stuff that you see in comic books today and this book pays tribute to that saturday morning tv show the artwork in this book always continues to impress it reminds me of the show uh even the characters interactions and the way they speak and talk reminds you of this show and it brings you back to a much simpler time in your life when you watch this so this book is about cobra commander who acquires a genie and he has three wishes he's on his final wish in this particular issue and uh, he wishes for something that the genie can't i guess do because there were certain wishes that he warned cobra commander and what happens is by the time we get to the end of this issue they are going to force to do one big battle between the joes so seeing that was really cool and of course at the end you wind up getting the PSA of the day of a Joe telling a kid not to do something bad. That just puts the icing on the cake for me. This is a great book, guys. A lot of fun. If you love G.I. Joe, you know what I'm talking about. I definitely recommend this one. The next book I think is going to be the sleeper book of the week. And this one goes to the Jurassic League issue one of six. 
don't write this one off, guys. I think this has potential. When I got done reading this book, all I thought of was, wow, I can see more ongoing stories of this. I can see a cartoon of this. I can see action figures of this. I can see a movie of this. Like, this had almost TMNT vibes all over it. The artwork was fantastic. And this one is written by Daniel Warren Johnson. Uh, he's the one that most recently wrote... Um, the Better Ray Bill series from Marvel, and the art was done by Juan Gedeon. And check out this two-page spread here, man. This is actually a really good-looking book, and I loved seeing all these characters. Like, it was awesome. It just took me to a different place. Just did something that comics used to do for me when I was a kid. And I think this book is really good for all ages. It's good for adults. It's good for kids. And I think if you're a young kid, you can be like, wow, this is great. Like, think about if you read Teen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when you were younger or any comic book when you were younger and you saw all that action on the page. It was awesome. And this book had an introduction of all these different characters, which I thought was cool. Black Mantasaurus. They had the Aquaman version. They had the Superman version of, uh, of a, di a dinosaur called Supersaur. So he kind of looks like this, right? Um, I had a blast. They showed Wonder Woman, who's a Triceratops. And I learned, I loved learning about their little origin stories. I had so much fun with this book. It was much better than I ever expected it. Did I make fun of it in the beginning? Yeah, absolutely. I thought it was dumb, lame. Like, but it shows you when there's good writing involved, you're going to get intrigued with the story and find out what's next. So, I definitely recommend this, guys. Um, I think this definitely has potential. Check out Jurassic League issue one. Coming in at number two goes to Boom Studios Grimm issue one. This book had me interested right from the start. I like dark books. I like horror books. But this wasn't really a horror book. It was about a story about this female by the name of Jessica Haro who works for death she represents death she's like a grim reaper and she takes people to like the waiting room once you die right so we see this issue where some man has died of drunk driving and she takes him to like this through the sea of death into the waiting room and you get to see all these different other grim reapers in there as well and what happens in this book is the guy that she wind up taking to the waiting room uh he winds up stealing her scythe and that's a big no-no and by the time you wind up getting to the end of this issue um she has crossed paths with the living and death and now living people can see her which is really really bad the artwork in this book is exquisite i love it it's got interesting tones right when the guy dies you can see it's very black very dark and then when we're going through like the sea of death uh everything turns red and then it highlights it in red so it's like the different types of moods represents the colors in the book when you go to the waiting room everything turns like yellow uh I loved all the different types of characters, the cast, the supporting characters. Everything about this book was an interesting premise. I loved seeing where people go when they first die and how death, and how death takes them there. So if you're looking for a different type of story, uh, I definitely say pick this one up. I think this book has some strong potential and uh, I can't wait to see where it goes from here, guys. Coming in at number one was a book that... I wasn't going to read at all because I thought the covers looked kind of corny or kiddish. And I was like, 8 billion wishes? What is this? Some kind of kid's book? And then I read what the story was about, right? And this gives meaning to don't judge a book by its cover for sure. And when I found out what this book was about, I told my shop, please, if you have copies left, put this on my pull list because I want to read what this is about. 
8 Billion Genies issue 1 was a surprise book for me. This blew me out of the water and I had so much fun reading it. And when you get to the end of the first issue, you are hooked. You want to know what happens in the next issue. That's how you do in issue one. The pacing of this book was beautiful. The artwork in this book was fine. You know, it, it did its job. I don't want to say that this was the best artwork that I have ever seen, especially when there was pages of not much going on. But as the book did go on, the artwork did get better. And, uh, you know, when you're used to seeing genies, you're used to seeing kind of a genie like I showed you in the G.I. Joe book. You get to see this big genie from a lamp and whatnot. And uh, in this book, the genies look like these little cutesy little characters, right? So what is this book about? Let's, let's go into this one a little bit more because I, I need you guys to actually buy this book. This is, this is awesome. So... This book, you get a bunch of characters in here that go to Lamewick's bar. This is this bar that everyone goes to. It's a rundown bar out in the 80s, right? And then you get this, this bartender by the name of Mr. Williamson. This dude knows everything. He's like the wise man. He knows how to speak Chinese. He has wise information for people. You got these band, these kids that play in a band and they're doing this gig here, right? All of a sudden, you get... People out of town are asking for directions. And then just like some magical thing out of nowhere, these genies pop up, these little cutesy little genies. And they go, hello, it's a great pleasure to meet you. And it's like every person on earth has a genie and you have only one wish, right? And so now think about it. There's 8 billion people in the world and everybody has a wish. What would you wish for if that happened to you? So right away, the first person to make a wish was the wise man, okay? He makes a wish and he sits there and he goes, I wish that no wish made outside this bar can affect this bar or anyone or anything inside of it. So he was the first person to probably make a wish at anybody in the world. And actually that happens because you get to see in the first eight seconds, there's eight billion people 8 billion population and then in the first eight minutes the or, the world has gone square there's like 100,000 less people and it's, whatever it is things have already changed in the first eight minutes so people in the bar are trying to decide what their wishes and whatnot and one wishes for love and and, and all that stuff but then there's a big explosion that happens outside right and you're like uh oh what's going to happen here and you get to see what these people are all wishing for. It, it's hilarious. People are wishing for driving big mechs. People are, are wishing that they're freaking big and huge. Um, one guy's driving a big foot. There's a castles in the sky. Like there's all kinds of crazy stuff. Now, whatever happens though, this bar can't get affected by the outside. So this bar is protected from everything that is happening. And you just get to continue to see all these people wish for all this stuff. One person's wishing for fantasy love. One person wished for their for their parents to get burned alive. And it was hysterical. And now our cast of characters are trapped inside this bar and they got to figure out what to do. And now you're going to get to see the world on how it basically dissolves, right? with uh, everyone having these wishes. Now, what happens if you're a person that wishes for everyone else's wish? Does that actually happen? I don't know, maybe. You'll have to read and find out. This is a freaking great book. Next level shit for me, guys. Definitely, I recommend this book. So there you guys have it. There are my top books of the week. I want to know in the comments below what's your favorite. And of course, guys, if you missed out on my comic book haul from Wednesday, there it is. Go ahead and click on it. See all the books I picked up for the week. And guys, keep buying, keep collecting, but most importantly, keep reading your comics.